Hi, welcome to Fans of the Forge, Season 5, Episode 11, Two-Handed Sword. Off to my left, we have Chris. What's up? Further left, Sean. I'm over here. And I'm Teresa. Um, so getting right into the episode, we have Andy, seven-year part-time experience, self-taught via YouTube. And yeah. He, YouTube mm, University, yeah, I believe you right. said. <laughs> He's the underdog for Sean, and... I picked him as my pick. Then we have Jordan, two and a half years full time. Um, nobody picked him. Then we have Jonathan with three years part time, who was the underdog for both Chris and myself. Mm -hmm. And then Ed, 20 years part time, who was chosen by Chris and Sean for their picks. And Ed, we know with um, the Space Cat t shirt. Yeah, that's why I picked him. Cat Man. Yes. <laughs> and from there, an abundance of cat jokes. Just, I actually didn't really even notice them. Uh, once you guys started like mentioning them as we're going through the notes, okay, yeah, they were all oh, there yeah. and very They're clever. Good. <laughs> well placed. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we have our round one. They were given motorcycles from which to harvest their metal. A lot of them went for the chains. Well, two of them went for the chains. One went for spring, and that was Jordan, who went for the spring, and it had a coating on it. And then Ed started with a rotor disc. He didn't really like the spark test on it, so he traded that out and started to also go, was it with a chain that he went with? Uh, yeah, he did point? go chain for mm -hmm. his canister. So at some point... All of them did the canister, Damascus, and I finally learned what the whiteout was used for. I had not seen previous episodes, previous seasons, to know why it was there and what they did with it. Mm -hmm. So, hooray question answered that they put in there to help it, you know, loosen the can away from it when they're all done. Pretty nifty. I wonder who like, came up with that idea. Yeah, who figured out that the whiteout has this particular elements in it that make it easy to remove the canister? It's like, right. why not It's just a barrier. Else? It drives as a barrier. It doesn't create impurities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so the blade that they needed to make out of all of these materials was between 9 and 11 inches, not to exceed 22, and it needed to be used for a handlebar chop and a seat, chopper seat slice. So they're using this motorcycle in kind of all the aspects. Right. So when I first saw them unveil what they were going to be using, and it was motorcycles, I go, Sean is going to love this yeah. episode. Like right you off got the these, bat. these like old bikes. Yeah. You know, no name. I don't know what, yeah, what they, they were. Yeah, they didn't say what they were. No, they were like Hondas or, you know, some, some crappy Yamahas or something. But it was interesting. And I was like, well, what would I use for if I had to cut one up? Yeah. And I would say the, the the brake rotor would make sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's right there. It's right in front. You cut it right up. Ed went for it. I I'm surprised he didn't uh, use it. I but he didn't get a lot of sparks off it. So I don't know. Maybe it's not hard, uh, as high carbon as I thought. Right. Um, other than that, you really want to get something very accessible. So other than like hacking off a piece of frame, but it's just tube. So I'm guessing, yeah, canister is probably the way to go. And chain, we know chain from other mm -hmm. episodes yeah. is a viable option for sure. So that'd be probably what you should go for. And a couple of guys went right for it. Another guy went for the spring, but it was like kind of chrome coated and yeah, yeah. not good. Not that really good uh, source of, of steel. Yeah. So all sorts of things happening around one with these parts that they're trying to you know, melt down and get together. Um, Ed went for the rotor and then he didn't want it. So he did the canister and uh, John had his canister that he did not put the white out in. So he was having issues getting that off. Andy didn't even bother. He just, you know, ground that down yeah. or pounded it down. Yeah. He made his billet with the canister still on. And then basically, was it Ben or David that said that you can just basically at the end, once you have your billet shaped you can grind off the canister metal because that's a softer metal that won't hold an edge as well but you only need to do it at the edge part you need right. to grind right. it down to the harder material so not a whole lot going on with andy because he was being so successful with this plan um the other guys all of them had to start over at some point 
Um, Ed went for a third try. I think he ended with the rotor, right? He had the rotor and then this, the then canister, the can, and that didn't really work out. Rotor. So they went back yeah. to the rotor. Yeah. Uh, Jordan had a whole bunch of voids because his springs didn't work out, and Ed gave him part of the rotor. Um, and did, was there issues with quenching with them? Were they like all super late? Was that, uh, was that, was that? Well, think... Jordan was the one that had some issues with quenching his. Right? Oh, oh he, 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 he had stuck like 45 his... minutes to do his blade, right? Was that him? Well, what I was... know Ed started Ed, at, 44 at 44 minutes, minutes. went back to okay. the rotor. Um, and at the same time, he gave his rotor to was Jordan. It Jordan. Yeah. So Jordan also started that time. And then, yeah, I think someone had like a really late quench. Like he went to quench it. Jordan did. He it was quenched after, it. Yeah. And then he stuck it back in and oh, then he, he quenched it in water. water. Yep. Then and he then went back to go to put it in oil. With three minutes left or, f- or something. Or right. It was totally cool. You couldn't get it hot enough to, <laughs> no. to do the another quench. And ben, the judges are like, what? Ben yeah. was so upset <laughs> that he's like, there's no way you could have gotten to 1100 degrees at that point. It's like, oh man. Yeah, but anyway, mm-hmm. he it, it got quenched at the end, but it wasn't even hot. It wasn't even red hot. Like you could, there was no heat. No, it was visible. Nothing. It just looked like a cold. Piece like you're of just steel. sitting out. So yeah. they all did eventually get quenched. They all had hardened blades, and they were able to submit their blades. When we get to judging, um, pocket tape measure comes out. Yeah, and John's was <laughs> short by one thirty second of an inch. It's crazy. But that was not as big of a flaw as the hardness issue on Jordan's blade. It, just, it wasn't it was as hard as the other ones. And mm-hmm. of the two problems, um, the length was easier to fix. So then Jordan got the boot. Yeah, it was interesting for, for Jonathan's because the way that he just happened to have his be short was the way that the blade ended at the handle so that he could actually grind the edge a little bit and that would extend the actual knife blade right. edge a little more. So it was fixable. Like that was part of why like, they had yeah. it. Whereas it was going to be harder, a lot harder for Jordan to fix his hardness issues and get everything done versus Jordan just having to do a little bit of grinding to extend the bottom part of the blade. But yeah. So, so yeah. And then there was that weird moment when they're examining the blades, they oh. pull out the tape measure. And when they say, oh, it's one thirty seconds short. Will Willis does an about face, stares at the guys sitting in the, the, wait the room. waiting room. Here, hold this. I want to see if I can recreate it. It's like something like he's got his hands like this. It's one thirty second then... short. <laughs> that was like that was the yeah. Point. That was it. But it was just like he looked back at them. It was so awkward and odd. It's like, weird. But it it's our wonder, right. Does he do that all the time and they just don't show it? Maybe. All right. like, is that Will a is a little weird because <laughs> if you notice, so usually at like round threes when you're going to do a test, he'll introduce it. He'll say, blah, blah, blah. All right, I'll turn you over, you know, for the sharpness test. All right, Doug. And then he'll like turn his head and then he'll turn his body. He does oh, this what? weird. Yes. <laughs> you've not noticed this? No. He turns his head. And then he turns his body and does like an about face and walks back. So You'll notice it now. We'll have to I'll, I'll definitely have to watch that. Oh my gosh. But yes. Oh, and, and they had um that Ed did not succumb to catastrophe. Yes. That yes. was the cat yes. joke. Yes. Cat That's one. right. So moving on to round two. Nothing special happens here. We have that written right on yeah, our board nothing here. Special. Nothing special. Except that Doug mispronounced the word hubris. And they laughed at him for it. And even he <laughs> laughed about it. A good sport. On the Facebook discussion group, somebody made a comment about it, and he said that he didn't bring his grammar with him to the forge that day. So good on Doug for being a good sport. And uh, from there, there was uh, they they went to testing. You know, they made their handles, whatever. It was fine. Yeah. There's nothing Really special. nothing happened there. So they had tests. They had to do a handlebar chop, which basically was Ben – holding the knife on the handlebars of the motorcycle and then smashing on it with a little baton. And he would hit it three times. And he had uh, some rolls and a, his handle was square. It was a little hard to, to deal with. Ed? It was about to happen right meow. Yeah, it's about to happen <laughs> right meow. And uh, he also had some slight rolls, which you're, you're literally hammering Metal handlebars, like there's no chance that 
nobody was going to have any issues here. Like they all metal. Something. It's going to happen. Something's going to happen. And then John actually was the least damaged. Jonathan was the least damaged of all of them. And they commented that his handle was awesome. So good, in fact, that um, ben. ben wanted to, to hug it. He just wanted to <laughs> hug the knife. <laughs> And then the second test they had was the seat slash, and they all cut well. There was a little bit of rippage with Andy's because his blade got pretty messed up by the first test. <laughs> and uh, But in the end, you know, Jonathan's was good, Andy's was good, and Ed's will cat. Yes. Thank yes. you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. That's <laughs> a very good one. Um, so the final judging for that round... Andy ended up getting booted because he had so much damage to his blade. So there goes Mr. YouTube University, and uh, that was Teresa's pick and Sean's underdog pick. So those <laughs> points can fly out the window. And from there, I don't know who said it, but it was Will. It was, it was Will. Will. So said, Will addresses the two guys. Yeah, they're moving on. That one of you is a kitty whisker away from being Fortune Five <laughs> champion. Really heavy on the oh, cat puns. <laughs> really heavy. I enjoyed it. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Kitty whisker away. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. So that leads us to the final part. They had to make the Indian two-handed sword. It's a sub 17th century weapon. Uh, it would have up to a five-foot <laughs> blade that was meant to flex. And it needed to be all steel with a double edge. 30 to 32 inches in length, an 18-inch handle, three globes, and had to be around 6.6 .6 pounds would be the optimal weight for it. Nothing too crazy here. John starts off. He's using spring steel, you know, leaf spring. Um, he had some trouble hammering it out. Uh, just it was so long and kind of dense. And uh, – he also had trouble with one of his globes where he dropped it and it cracked and then he tried to weld it back together, but he had his welder set like too high. To It was manufactured drama when it came down to it. He yeah. was doing pretty well. He had a minor issue with his globe and they made way more out of it than it yeah, really was. Yeah, he burned was. a hole through it. Next shot, when they go back to him after they cut the Ed, he's fine. He's, he's no problem at all. He's mm -hmm. like, oh, I fixed it. Okay, problem. Done. Yeah. Um, then it's on to Ed. Ed starts uh, his process. Well... He goes to start his propane forage. Well, there's a faulty propane valve just leaking gas. So he switches to coal. Um, his anvil had some dimples on it when he was hammering, and so it would put you know, reverse marks into his blade. So he went to grind that smooth. Well, his grinder died on him. So he's kind of facing some crazy issues. They made it seem like his whole day one was just gone, like that right. it was a waste. Yeah. Like he didn't get anything just skip to like day three? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. So I guess it wasn't too exciting. Um, go out and get a grinder. <laughs> I guess that's all that. Um, and uh, after, I think he quenched once, went back, because he had a, got a warp in it. On a second quench, it kind of straightened that warp. It was still a slight warp, but he just left it as it was. He said, it, you know, we'll just roll with it. So that moves us to the testing phase so there's the kill test which is a boar carcass slice so john gets his goes through nice balance it'll kill um ed's was a bit heavy but he had a good leather wrap on the handle and it will also kill then it came up to a bone chop so that it was like well like, like cow femurs or something oh yeah big thing you know bones. three of them you know one above the other um, they're gonna get, there was a bone chop. They're going five times. Um, Ed got through two of those bones. He had some chipping on his blade. John went through one. He also had some chipping, and his round handle kind of let the blade kind of roll a little bit. Um, then it was on the sar sharpness test, which was a pumpkin slice. And uh, John, sharp blade, cut through both. Ed, well, he cut one. And his the weight made it kind of cut upwards, so it kind of. Well, David was overcorrecting. Yeah, he was overcorrecting weight. for the weight and kind of. That test was really cool to watch the way that when he cut with John's, 
Like you can see the blade flexing as he's going. That's right. David was pretty straight, but then it just flexes and it goes up and it goes back down yeah. in the in the second it's pumpkin. Neat. So that was a cool little aspect little of it. Little waveform. Mm. Um, so in the end, John won, but Ed was still happy cat. <laughs> and that's all that matters. Yes. So Jonathan won. That was mine and Teresa's underdog picks. So we get two points for those. So to tally up the leaderboards, so we start with uh, Sean is in third place with five points. I am still in second place with eight points, and Teresa is leading the pack with 12 points. Terrible. <laughs> we still have a number. Sean, you can be the underdog. <laughs> I am the underdog. We still have a number of episodes left this season, so we'll have to see how that plays out as we record more. And we're probably going to have to come up with something that the winner gets or yeah. something that the winner wins for. We've got time to come up with a We have time. We'll have to think about it. That's um, a good idea. But like we that. should come up with something. Wait, well, I'm not even close to winning, so I don't know <laughs> if that's a really good idea. I don't care about that. Well, maybe maybe, maybe finding something that's a good reward will motivate oh, you to pick motivate better. <laughs> I don't think he's unmotivated. I am very motivated. <laughs> <laughs> I got motivation to last for days. <laughs> <laughs> and with that... We'll call it an episode, season five, episode 11, The Two-Handed Sword. Uh, thank you again for watching. Please subscribe and like the video. Please comment below if you have anything you want to talk about. And we will catch you in the next one. Goodbye. Doug Cam. Hashtag Doug Cam. Hashtag Doug Cam. Doug Cam.